Alicia, and good morning and hello in Cherokee. I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Mary T. Newman. In the Native American culture, we used a different way to preserve our foods. Without electricity or any of the ways that people today store their food, we, we usually would dehydrate uh, our foods. We would also store them in the ground. If you go to Alaska, the food is in, uh, in the ground in the, what they call the permafrost, and that's their refrigerator. But here, particularly in the southeast with the humidity, we really used a lot of drying techniques. So on the table, you will see different ways to preserve our foods. If we look at pumpkin, we can cut it in rings and hang it over the fire. Or right now you see what it looks like dehydrated. We have apples. We preserve those by making cider. Got these picked the other day, the fresh pawpaw. Those would be hung up to dry. We dehydrated the apples. And all you do is put them back in water and let them soak and then you're able to cook. Or they make a great fried pie. Sumac, the farmers put sumac under their tobacco for a good finish on the tobacco leaf, but it also makes a great tea. These are called leather britches. This is how the green beans were strung up and they dried. And they called them leather britches because they kind of like shrink a little bit. Then in the fall, you just cook them whole. You put them back in the water and just let them cook. And this is how they stay. You would also do your peppers the same way. And then you could crush them later whenever you wanted peppers. Corn, which was very, very valuable to native people and indigenous people around the world. Corn took a different form of storing. This is dried corn. We would cook this and call it sofki. And this would be the hominy. And so this is cracked corn, the, the version. You would take the lye off with, uh, the husk off with lye and then you let it dry and crush it, and this would be your hominy. When you cook hominy this way, it's thick. It's not like the hominy in the can that's full of water. This is what it looks like cooked. And then you have the walnut. The walnut was valuable. The green hull was medicine because if you rubbed it on ringworm, the itching was gone and the ringworm was gone. When you opened it up, you had the, the shell and you broke it open, you had the nut meat, and if you boiled it, you had the brown dye. People still use that brown dye today. And look at the corn, this beautiful silk. For every silk, there is a kernel. And when you pull this off, you save that silk, and let it dry. When you let it dry, put it in a canning jar and put it away. And in the winter, when you want something sweet, just crumble this up and this is where your sugar is. So you have so many things that we use today that you never thought about how you stored it. Winter's coming on, and if you want to know, this is persimmons, and they say the old, the old uh, saying is that if you slice it open, if it's a spoon, you're going to be shoveling a lot of snow. So we shall see. And this is the pulp from the persimmon tree. The deer love persimmon, so when they start to drop, you got to be really ready to get out there and pick those up. They're, it makes a really good bread, a pudding, or a cake. The pine cone, the pine nut is in here, and when they drop, the, the cones open up, the pine nut falls out, and they're gathered, particularly out west. Uh, very, uh, very expensive when you think about the weight of them, but that's a lot of work, and then that pine cone can close back up. So you have a lot of different ways to preserve your foods, and all of these would be insect-free, and you would be able to eat all during the winter, whatever you preserved.